Hello, my name is James Bachman. Today I will be presenting on behalf of our team from the University of Adelaide and the Australian Institute of Machine Learning, consisting of Matthew Howe, Adrian Orenstein, Stefan Podgorski, Sam Barami, and our principal investigator Ian Reid. I'll be covering the work titled The Edge of Disaster, a battle between autonomous racing and safety, which represents a summary of our submission to the Learning to Race Challenge in 2022. This challenge aims to assess autonomous agents' ability to safely generalise to circuits it has never raced on before. Organisers provided participants with a racing simulator that included two racetracks and a robo-race devbot car. The simulation code allowed us to receive either single or multi-cam images from the race car and send acceleration and steering inputs back to it at a frequency of 10 Hz. The competition itself was divided into two main stages. In stage one, all agents were evaluated on the Thruxton racetrack after unlimited access to Thruxton and Angsley circuits. In stage two, agents were evaluated on an unseen Las Vegas circuit after completing a one hour practice window. Each of the circuits agents must race around contain diversity in both their visual appearance and profile. Thruxton, for instance, is a long track with two tight slow sections and many fast sweeping corners most of which can be taken at very high speeds. Angsley is much shorter, with more consecutive tight corners and a long straight leading into and out of a hairpin. The unseen racetrack used in Stage 2, Las Vegas, also differs significantly from the two previous tracks. It contains very complicated sequences of corners that are quite hard for agents to navigate. In comparison to Thruxton, controlling vehicle behaviour through this track is much more nuanced. Many of the techniques previously explored for autonomous race car control were not directly applicable to this challenge. This is due to the limited information available at evaluation time. Agents that have shown high performance in other autonomous racing competitions have followed a pipeline that involves perception, localization, planning and control. Early into the competition we decided to follow this pattern as it allowed us to be flexible in building and iterating each module in the pipeline separately. In particular, our solution was influenced by work done in the Formula SAE Autonomous Racing Competition, Robo Race, and the Indy Autonomous Challenge. Our qualifying submission to Stage 1 implements two of the modules discussed in the previous slide, Perception and Control. Our agent segments the drivable area within view of the cameras and then tries to control the vehicle along the observed centerline. The perception module uses a deep neural network to segment out the drivable area in front of the vehicle. Using this segmentation and the known camera calibration, we project the segment into an ego vehicle coordinate frame, producing the track limits in real world coordinates. We then smooth these using polynomial fitting in order to produce a representation of the road. Our control algorithm uses this road representation to plan a trajectory for the car. It does this by drawing a straight line from the vehicle's current position to the furthest centerline point without crossing the detected track limits. Steering angle and acceleration inputs are then calculated using this line's length and angle. Although our follow the gap agent was good enough to qualify us for stage two, it had significant shortcomings that needed to be addressed if we wanted to be able to race faster. The restriction to linear trajectories meant that some corners were often handled very clumsily by the agent. As acceleration was also tied to the look-ahead distance of the camera, it was extremely cautious through crests, even if those crests were in the middle of long straights. Errors in camera projection could also lead to the vehicle traveling too fast into corners, and hence maximum velocities were needed to be maintained in a conservative way to allow sufficient time for braking in these scenarios. As the system had no sense of vehicle dynamics, it was very hard to tune into a safe and predictable result and thus was not fit to utilise in the second round. Moving into stage two, we maintained the perception module and focused our efforts on modifying the control algorithm. In this case, we moved on to a system that used model predictive control to calculate the vehicle inputs and plan trajectories. To do this, we pose input control calculation as an optimization problem in which we minimise a trajectory's cost with respect to vehicle velocity and yaw at each time step. The cost is calculated using four key terms. One that penalizes a vehicle for deviating from the detected centerline. Another that penalizes slow trajectories 
and two that encourage smooth changes to control input over the course of a trajectory. The overall behaviour of a vehicle can be modified by adjusting each term's strength of contribution to this cost. The solution to this optimization problem is a series of vehicle velocities and yaws that we then translate to control inputs using the equations at the bottom of the slide. This system, using Perception and MPC, was our final submission evaluated for Stage 2 of the challenge. However, we still believed the major limitation present was the current restriction to using local visual information to inform control. This restriction to local information means that agents can't anticipate what is ahead, preventing fast exits from corners onto straights and heavy braking into them. To enable this behaviour, an agent must know where it is around the circuit. To do this within the context of the competition, we use our one hour free practice window to build a map of the circuit. This is achieved by using our solution to stage 2 with extremely conservative parameters to drive the car around the circuit, gathering detections from our perception module. These detections are then assembled into an ordered fashion, which represents a map of the circuit. During evaluation, we don't know where our agent will start around the racetrack, and therefore we must localise the agent to our created map. To achieve this, we use a particle filter. Particles in the filter are initialised uniformly along the circuit and are propagated using a bicycle model. We score the particles based on the error between local observations of the track limits and the maps. Low scoring particles are removed from the filter and high scoring particles are resampled. Typically after the first corner, the particle filter will have converged sufficiently for our use case. In practice we found that our localization module was not accurate enough to use the track limits extracted from the map to drive from. Instead, we use the map to generate a series of reference velocities that are used to calculate accelerations from instead of the model predictive controller. Using these reference velocities allows the vehicle to behave appropriately without line of sight. Travelling faster through uninterrupted straights and slowing down before corners it can't yet see. This system, that we call MPC++, forms the first version of our complete perception, localization, planning and control pipeline. Although MPC++ enables look ahead for velocity, trajectory planning is done exclusively from local vision. This restricts our agent's ability to achieve high level racing goals such as linking corners effectively, managing tyre slip out of corners and following a smooth racing line. These goals may be achieved with further improvements to the perception, localization, planning and control pipeline. Specifically, the perception system assumes a flat ground plane which doesn't shift with respect to the vehicle. This leads to the track limit detections being skewed when there is any pitch and roll from the vehicle or elevation changes in the track. Additionally, our control algorithm doesn't take into account dynamic vehicle motion and the varying levels of grip available to the car. This leads to situations where grip can be broken and the car to lose control. Currently, our system is detuned so that we do not reach these limits. We quantitatively compared each agent using lap times around the three circuits in the Learn to Race Challenge. Results for the MPC++ system are not shown for Las Vegas, as it was not submitted to the competition server. In each major revision to the system, we observed a large decrease in lap time. We further hand-tuned MPC++ to each track individually, which further yielded decreases in lap time. This motivates us to extend MPC++ with learning to automatically tune control hyperparameters. Qualitatively, we can compare the behaviour of the vehicles controlled with Follow the Gap versus MPC++. Starting at the same point of the circuit, MPC++ is already carrying twice the speed into the straight. As a result, it reaches a significantly higher top speed before braking later than follow the gap. Due to the better trajectory planning, MPC++ also carries an additional 10 miles per hour speed through the chicane. Follow the gap is more conservative on exit from the chicane as it is not aware that the next section of road is a straight. This leads to MPC++ finishing the section significantly faster. We believe that the systems presented form a strong baseline for the Learn to Race challenge in coming years. We found that the modular pipeline presented allowed us to concentrate development on a specific area pertaining to autonomous racing, such as control or perception, individually. In the future, we would like to work on upgrades to the perception system to better extract track limits rather than assuming a flat ground plane. Our localization model to allow for strategic vehicle positioning and effective consecutive cornering improved non-linear vehicle dynamics or utilizing a Pajeka tire model, introducing learning to optimize hyperparameters in the MPC controller. On behalf of our team, 
Thank you for your attention and I hope you have a wonderful day.